<laughs> is this gonna be mine? Yeah, that one will be yours, and that's yours, Damon. You I can just stay right into it. Yeah, stay as close to it as you can. Here's an ashtray. Get underway here. One, two. We'll just say something, make sure that's on. Uh, radar, quasar, sonar, <laughs> Sputnik. Here we go. Good evening. You're listening to WHFS Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, my name's Thomas, and joining us uh, this evening is John Prine, uh, who is down at the Warner Theater. Uh, he's in the middle of an engagement. Tonight you're down there uh, for one show. You just did a show last night. How was it? Oh, hot, real hot. Yeah, and did you like the Warner? Yeah, yeah, I've never seen the Warner before. It's a nice theater. It's just about the right size. Uh -huh. You know, there's a whole bunch of people. Like, I mean, you know, I think it seats 2,000, but the place is still small enough. You know, you don't feel like a, a fly out there. You know? Right. The last time I saw you play um, at the Carter Baron, you were like by yourself, but now you got a band traveling with you. Yeah, got a bunch of guys, I've got a lot of bar bands in Chicago. Uh -huh. and, uh, uh, they're real good. <laughs> You know, I lucked out. They uh, they uh, listen to what I play on guitar, and they they play the same thing I play when I'm solo, except it's amplified. You know, and yeah. they follow me real close. If I if I break a string and put my guitar down, they stop playing the song. <laughs> you know. Why'd you decide to um, take a band out on the road? Because it gets lonesome out there by right? yourself. So, uh huh. You know, I mean, I like to have fun. I like to go take it. You know, I have somebody there to take it. Everything's working out well, though. Yeah, this is about uh, just about the most comfortable tour I've done since I've been doing this. Mm -hmm. You have a new album uh, on Asylum called... Bruised Orange. Yeah. Want to tell us uh, something about it? How'd you come up with the name Bruised Orange? Well, Bruised Orange was the name of a short story I wrote in 68. Uh, it was about two fellows that uh, worked in a factory together. And they never let each other finish one conversation. The other guy would start a conversation, yeah, and his friend would finish it. You know. Mm -hmm. You have a, a favorite on the on, on the, the album? Yeah. E, well, right now my current favorite is "There She Goes." Uh, there she goes. There, there she goes. Ah, uh. it's like you have left me breathless, <laughs> or you ain't nothing but a hound dog. Uh. There she goes. Uh. Well, let's play something from it and then come back and, and talk some more. Great. We're going to edit a lot of this. I'm watching these levels. you got to get a little All right. closer, John, or I'll light it up. Want me to introduce There She Goes? Yeah, if you want, go ahead. Uh, there She Goes. This is about a fellow and his wife that, uh, like, he's a, he's a nice fellow. He's got all kinds of friends that think he's a great guy. And she's a real nice girl. And she's got friends that think she's the sweetest girl in the world. And when they get together as a couple, you know how couples... When people fall in love with each other, they form like a third personality. They become like one thing. Well, the one thing these people became, like nobody digs. <laughs> and, and like nobody can stand them as a couple. You know, it's like Mr. and Mrs. Hyde. You know? uh -huh. And that's, there she goes. That's yeah. great. We can like take that out and edit it. Okay, this is number two, break number two. You're listening to WHFS, Bethesda, Maryland. And that was John Prine from his new album, uh, bruised orange and John's with us and Damien's around here somewhere. He's somewhere around here. I think I've seen him before. How you doing Damien? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Um, Sabu visits uh, the Twin Cities alone. I understand that has a, a story behind it. Well it's got a couple of stories actually. Um, I, see, I saw I was in St. Paul one night doing a show by myself, and uh, this was when I was leaving Atlantic Records, and uh, I was kind of fed up with uh, uh, the music business, so to speak, you know. And when I left them, uh, so I was out doing this concert that I'd promised to do a couple months before. I went to do the show, and it was actually a pretty mediocre show. I mean, I sang the songs and remembered the words, but I really wasn't there, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and I mean, it was like, uh, I didn't want to be there at the time. But, you know, I wanted to be somewhere else. And I got back to my hotel room and I saw a Sabu movie. And uh, Sabu, uh, here's Sabu riding through the jungle on his elephant. And he always looks confused and dazed. You know, and I said, gee, I could kind of relate to him. You know, and I figured that guy was a movie actor. I said, he must have had to go on a promotional tour before. 
and I got this whole p- picture of Sabu going out riding his elephant through shopping centers in the Midwest in the winter time. And instead of a loincloth, he had corduroy on, you know. And then in the chorus, you hear a little kid like standing on the curb holding his mother's hand and going, Look, Ma, here comes the elephant boy, you know. And they, meanwhile, this guy's so stoned, they've got him tied to the top, strapped to the elephant, you know, and he's waving his arm, and you know. So I just wanted to write a song about it. I see. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, you've been. Uh, been a, a bit dormant the last couple of years. I mean, not really. We uh, haven't. I just haven't put a record out. Yeah. See, I never associated myself much with the record business before. You know, I had a record contract with Atlantic Records, but I could have sold more records out of a station wagon than they sold. You know, and so I never. Actually, all I was doing was being an entertainer and a songwriter, and going out and seeing my friends. And the people that come to my shows were actually my promotional people. They would bring their friends around. And their friends would bring their friends, and that's how I got any kind of reputation. It certainly wasn't through, you know, this station was one in particular that would give me radio play, but I just didn't get that much radio play, you yeah. know. So I was just doing it like from, um, it was word of mouth mostly, you know, because there's not that many stations like WHFS across the country. Yeah, well, we sure dig your music here in Washington, as you you know. Uh, well, last night we'll, we'll prove uh, that. Um on your uh, your first album that you did, like Christofferson did the the liner notes. You yeah, still Chris out championed with him? my cause for three years. About I need to, from the way I understand it, he couldn't. Nobody could come within five feet of Chris. Or he'd give him a half an hour. And John Prine, mm. you know, I just saw him a couple of weeks ago. He looks real good and healthy, and he's a big movie you know, star. He's a big movie star and everything. Yeah, yeah. He looks about fifteen now. He's all healthy and everything. Yeah. Um. On your new album, like Stevie Goodman produced it. Right. You yeah. guys finally got around to doing that? Yeah, I called him up. I'd been working on this record since last June. And I had a lot of good tapes, but they weren't a record. Like I had tapes where the song was right, the version was right, and there was a lot of energy. And, but when you cleaned it up for a record, we weren't using any engineers. You know, We didn't want any engineers in. We didn't want any non-musical people around a musical thing. We were trying to record live in the studio. And uh, uh, things got fairly confusing. I ended up with like about 16 great versions of each song. And if somebody told me they liked number 12, I'd tell them they were wrong. It was number two for sure. You know, so I finally around Christmas time, it, I figured it had been long enough that I hadn't put a record out. And I called up Goodman and said, Steve, let's do it. And he put aside everything he had to do for the next three months and went in and made my record with me. You know, so I c- kind of call it a friend. Yeah. That's the way the tape goes around. Yeah. That's the way the world goes around. I like that song a lot. Thank you. Um, I had all kinds of different versions of that song. Yeah. You see, I like, I like the melody a whole lot, and by the time I'd worked with the song for about, I'd sang it about 6,000 times in the studio, uh, it started to sound like a Buddy Holly song to me, like it was like, um, see, Chuck Berry and Buddy Holly like used to write words like um, there was a syllable for every note almost. You know, and like if you read the lyrics off fast enough, you'd almost have the melody. You know, it was just a frantic reading of the notes. Like, and that's the way the world goes around. Was originally written as a story song, but like I got so carried away with the melody here, I was singing it real fast. You know, and Stevie reminded me when we went to cut it that you have to slow it down because you are telling a story. He said, if you weren't telling a story, then you could do it like that. You know. And a little confusing things like that in the musical world of knowledge. You know, that's well, the way that the world goes around. Well, How's that listen. for a cue, Thomas? Okay. <laughs> let's listen to uh, That's the Way the World Goes Around and something else off of Bruised Orange and come back. Okay, we're back. Uh, this is WHFS, Bethesda, Maryland, and we're uh, speaking with John Prine. If uh, you just tuned in. Um, on uh, Bruised Orange, you you seem to attract a lot of people. You have Jackson Brown and Ramblin' Jack uh, singing back up on the Hobo song. Oh, yeah. Well, Stevie had this whole idea about a huge chorus of people. So everybody that worked on the record or dropped by the studio, he had them go in and sing on the Hobo song. We ended up with a chorus of, like, 25 hobos. <laughs> you know, that's a kind of an old song. I'd written oh, about eight years ago about half of it and I never quite finished it 
And uh, I finally put a third verse to it, that talking verse, and recorded it. Uh, it seems to me like there's no... I used to see when I was a little kid, not all the time, but I used to see down by the railroad tracks every once in a while. You see a hobo camp and you see a fire going. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, I kind of get the idea that a hobo lives at home with his mother and, you know, watches soap operas and, <laughs> you know, lives on welfare. You know, that's a hobo nowadays. But, you know, I, so I was just like asking the musical question, where are all the hobos <laughs> gone to? You know? How long... Uh, did it take you to, to put that album together? Huh? How long did it take you to put put uh, Bruised Orange together? <sighs> well, man, I'll tell you the truth. I never spent more than two weeks before on a record, and I started on this thing June of 77, and I finished it in March. Now, what we didn't use but all the tracks that are on it. Stevie and I started up in January of 78 and finished in March. You know, but I've been working on that. I was choosing from about 25 tunes. I'm all set to go back in the studio and do my next record. I want to try and have it out by Christmas. It's going to be called uh, Storm Windows. On Asylum? Yeah, oh. I, yeah, I got two more records for Asylum. Storm then, Windows. Yeah, well, you see, I called this one Bruised Orange, and since then I've gotten all kinds of orange things from the record company, so I need some Storm Windows for my house. And I figured if I call the next one Storm Windows, Joe Smith might buy me some Storm Windows. <laughs> yeah. That's terrific. Let's see, i got to take a pregnant pause here. Think of something else. You want to say anything, Damien? No, I have no <laughs> <laughs> When are you running for Senator, Blotto? <laughs> no, here, we'll try You're something. Running for Senate. <laughs> How long are you out on the road for, John? Uh, I'll be out till Labor Day, and then probably take a couple weeks off and do colleges for a couple months, then go back in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, when we be getting back through Washington, do you know? Hopefully, uh, we almost did three nights here instead of two, and I just figured I'd rather come back sooner than stay in town three nights. I'd like to come back, so hopefully by the end of the summer, or maybe in early September. Mm. You know, I like it around here. All these people have been real nice to me and around the D.C. area and Virginia. And we're going to be back in Norfolk and Richmond at the end of July. Yeah. You know, so we'll be close. You know. You like college circuits, playing a colleges well <laughs> i tell you it gets uh, it's yeah it's fun but when you go out and play all colleges it's kind of crazy because you're uh, i'm 31 years old now and like college kids keep looking younger and younger to me because i'm getting older and like it's real weird you know like you see eight i can remember when i was 18 but like 18 year old people to me today look 12 only because you know i still think i'm 18 you know, and it's kind of weird, you know. But college is always fun to play, and they enjoy the music. And we try and, uh, you know, we try our, our best to get frantic and, you know, break a few strings and sing a bunch of songs and get everybody moving, you know. That's the idea of it. Have a little fun. Bunch of wild and crazy guys. Huh? <laughs> I oh, say we are some wild and crazy guys. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Where are you from originally, I'm from John? Maywood, Illinois. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a suburb right on the... On the uh, west side of Chicago, right on the just outside the city limits a little bit. It's in a pretty old suburb. Mm. And you live in that area? I still live within about 10 miles. I live out uh, close to O'Hare Airport, so I can just kind of fall out of the house and get poured into an airplane, you know? Yeah, you know? that's cool. You like to fly? No, I hate it. Would you rather, uh, I mean, drive around I'd to gigs? I'd rather drive in a bus. I'd rather drive my old Ford to gigs, but they don't like me to drive. When I'm out on tour, because I lose my glasses and everything. I got an old 51 Ford or a custom club coupe with glass packs and blue dot taillights. And man, I mean, that when I ride that sucker down the street, it, <laughs> it turns some heads. Boy. People get whiplash, they look at that car so fast. <laughs> I'll bring it out here sometime. You got to. Yeah. Bring it up to the station. <laughs> I got it on, uh, we got a backdrop we're using for our shows with a big old orange moon, and I got a uh, the back of my 51 Ford with the blue dots and the blue dots we got painted with phosphorus paint and they, it's life size too, you mm -hmm. know, and the blue dots hit about the first 15 rows. I like blue dot taillights. Earlier, they remind me of some of my early girlfriends. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, earlier you were talking about uh, getting your music spread by word of mouth. 
there was a special on TV, a Johnny Cash special, and he did one of your songs um, not too long ago, a couple of months Spanish ago. Spanish Pipe Dream, him and yeah. June. Yeah. Yeah. Turn loose in my coat. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah him a, and June did it. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Yeah, his daughter's doing Angel from Montgomery, too. Yeah, she's supposed to come by. I guess the they station. must have found that old John Prine album laying around the cash household. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I like that. I got a couple of new tunes that'd be just right for Johnny Cash, too. Yeah. But that's exposure right there. I mean, oh, yeah. On national television. Um, what are you listening to now, John? Any music that you're into? Any of the new uh, stuff? There's not too many of the current things I'm listening to, you know. I'm listening to mostly real old stuff. I'm listening to stuff from about 1949 through 54. Like country stuff and a lot of country stuff just on the verge of rock and roll. You know, I'm listening to Leuven Brothers, early Elvis stuff. Uh, some Buddy Holly. Things that are just kind of country and real frantic. You know, a lot of old Jerry Lee Lewis things. Um, some of the current stuff I like. Uh, I like Elvis Costello. Yeah. He's good. Uh, let's see. Uh, I like some of the country singles around. You know, I always like to listen to George Jones, you know, and people like that. But there's not a whole lot of current stuff out that I uh, would lay down eight bucks for. Right. You know. Well, there's I'd a... I'd pick up my guitar and make up a song. There's a good example. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis is still going strong, and I'm oh, sure yeah. he's older than all of us. He just put a record out on Mercury. Actually, he's probably younger than all of us. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, anybody's going like that. I guess the the thing is to think young and keeps you going. Think young and drink coke. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> however it goes. Well, look at the Rolling Stones. Yeah, they just played, they were just in town huh? at the Warner. They played at the Warner. Oh right, Theater. I heard it. that was a, what the beginning of their tour. Yeah, was it? yeah, it was in the. Well, I would like to, I'd like to see the show. I've yeah. never seen the Stones live. My wife saw them in '75 when the Commodores were opening up. She saw him in Chicago. And my baby brother used to see him back in 64 and 65 and that. I never used to go to concerts when I was a teenager. I used to go to Legion Hall dances and, you know, <laughs> hang out at lounges where you had to be under 21 to get in, you know. What kind of music did you listen to when you were growing up or getting into music? Top 40 and country and country music. At, at home, my father played a lot of Roy Cuff and... Hank Williams and stuff like that, and then uh, I'd hang out and listen to, you know, I was in love with Brenda Lee for years. So, yeah. Some girl broke my heart when I was 15, and I must have spent all my money at Hamburger Willie's playing all alone in my. Brenda Lee called me up two weeks ago. She's with my record company now, and some girl at the record company told uh, Brenda Lee that I had a crush on her, so she got my home number and called me up. My heart, man, jumped out. It went over my wife's Lincoln and crossed the street, you know. I mean, like Brenda Lee. Imagine Brenda Lee calling you up and saying, Hello, Thomas, this is Brenda Lee. Sweet that nothings. little voice. Yeah, sweet nothings, <laughs> right, right in my ear, <laughs> you know. So I was kind of flipped out. I, I'm going to write her a song. I'll bet. Yeah. John, you did a song when you were playing with Leon Redbone, like, 76, about the future, a song about the future. I can't think of the oh, name of it. Jumping Jehoshaphat. And living in the future. It's not on uh, uh, an album. I, I got. Yet. I, t I told you we like we picked these ten from about twenty five songs. When we put these ten together, because they went together as a collection of ten songs, better than some of the ones we had to leave off, like Bottomless Lake and Jehoshaphat. And I'm gonna put all those on one record, and probably a live record that I can tell stories with. You know, yeah. my next one's gonna be a rock and roll record, and the one after that'll be a live record with a lot of stories on it. I'm starting my own record company. I'm gonna have a sound distributed, hopefully. All I gotta do is sell some records for them at first. <laughs> you know, and then uh, I can start my own I'm old boy records. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. Do it yourself, cut at out the middleman. At first it's gonna be all female country and western singers. What's the story with uh, Linda Ronstadt and Emmylou Harris doing an album together? I don't know. Never, um, never showed up, never materialized? Well, like, yeah, well, it's not. An album isn't as easy. It actually ought to only take 40 minutes to do an album. 41 minutes. 20 minutes for the first side, one minute to turn the record over, and 20 minutes the other one. I mean, if you know the songs and you're in tune, but it doesn't always work out like that. I mean, it took me uh, nine months to make this one. 
and the record's only 32 minutes long, you know. So, like, you could say, where were you the rest of the time? <laughs> we are trying to make the record, you know. But it doesn't always work out right away. You would think Linda Ronstadt and Emmy Lou and Dolly Parton just sit in one room and a record would happen, you know. But they all got to be, uh, you know, everything's so. got to be right, you know. There's probably a lot of red tape as, as well as... Uh, you know, and putting the album out, there's probably a lot of red tape that the record companies go through. Well, see, there's a certain thing you got to capture on a record that keeps... You're not doing a video thing, and you've got to... You can't have five seconds of a lapse of attention on a record. There's got to be something going on. That's why they put all these noises and stuff in a lot of AM singles, because you got to... I mean, those people got a lot of stations to listen to, and if they ain't got to listen to the radio, they can just turn the thing off and listen to the windshield wipers, you know? So you gotta have constant their constant attention. And a record, it's gotta be that special thing. Unless you go to buy a live album and you know what you're getting in front, you know, you're just getting a tape of somebody singing. But a record isn't always that. It's gotta be a real special performance. And you can't always arise to that when you want to. Well, I see what you're saying, and that's a good idea to get into doing your own because you'll, you'll be involved with the production and right. and everything else. Damien was telling me he saw you in New York. Stevie Goodman was playing guitar with you. Yeah, Central Park. You got his a band from Nashville last summer, and I took him to Central Park with me. We had steel drums, two bass players. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed that gig. It was fun. It was out in Central Park outdoors in August, and it was hot. And the people were hot, and we were hot, and everything was fun. When you're hot, you're hot. <laughs> yeah, the right song, guys. <laughs> so, John, where do you go after you leave um, the Warner Theater uh, tonight? Uh, New York City, bottom line for two nights. Then Boston, then Long Island, then Philly, and uh, upper upstate Massachusetts, and then back to Chicago for a big, big uh, thing out of outdoors with Stevie Goodman and Jethro Burns and my band and me playing uh, about ten thousand people. Yeah, and we're gonna we're looking forward to it. We're all going home. Steve came by in November. Uh, did a thing with Damien and Jethro Burns. They played live up here, and uh, they were great. My guitar player is Jethro's son, John yeah. Burns. Yeah. He grew up on the road, traveling yeah. out with his dad and Homer. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Just had the, the business instilled in him, I guess. Right, yeah. Um, what about Fish and Whistle? That's my new single. Is it? Yeah, it's going to come out next week as a single. Is there a story behind that? Yeah. Um, Fish and Whistle is a... Uh, well... <laughs> You see, uh, I got to thinking one day, uh, they built this car wash down the street from my house. And I like car washes because I like my car to be clean. And this is one of those automatic ones where nobody touches your car, you just drive through it. And when you get to the end of it, there's like all kinds of soap all over my car. And it dried up, you know. And like, uh, it looked worse than the dirt did that was on it before. And I got back home and I thought, of, you know, I said, well, now my car's screwed up. I'm out a buck and a half, and I got this hole in the street outside my house, and every time a truck goes over it, the whole house shakes. And also, some of the people I was, had been talking to, some of the, I had to take a lot of attorneys to lunch in order to get out of my record contract with Atlantic. And this is all going on at the same time. Now, these are all small complaints. They're not something, I'm, you know. But when they all happen at once, you say this little prayer, Father, forgive us for what we must do. We'll forgive you. You know, you forgive us, and we'll forgive you. We'll forgive each other till we both turn blue, and then we'll whistle and go fishing in heaven. Like, you know, if I get through all this stuff, all this crazy stuff down here, then maybe someday I can go fishing with Spencer Tracy, you know? And so that's like, so I was just writing exactly what happened to me. You know, it's just like, I've been thinking lately about the people I meet, the car wash on the corner and the hole in the street, and the way my ankles hurt with these shoes on my feet, <laughs> and I'm wondering if I'm gonna see tomorrow. <laughs> it's that simple. It just rhymes. That's all. You just talk about what happens to you. you know? I get it. It's great. Well, let's listen to some um, some more stuff from Bruised Orange, and then come back and talk some more. 
And we're back again. Uh, this is WHFS Bethesda, Maryland. And that was John Prine. John, uh, I sure appreciate you coming by. My pleasure, Thomas. And uh, talking to us. And as I told you before, last time I, I met you, we were downstairs, but now we're, we're high class. We're up here, and you have to bring your guitar with you. When well, you I by. meant to bring it with me. Uh, sorry, I didn't. Uh, I usually bring my guitar when I come over to WHFS. Me and Eric Anderson sang Bobby McGee up here once. <laughs> you know, it was like, a, it was fun. You know, I was trying to bring my guitar, and I would have brought it this time, but we were, had a pretty crazy day. Had a ball game this afternoon, and How we won. Yeah? Yeah, I got the game ball in my hotel room right now. Has your team got a name? Uh, today it was the Vidiots. Uh, I think that was because... Um, the team we played is a regular softball team. This was just my road crew and my band and me. So we were handicapped right from the start because <laughs> I was on the team. I'm not much of a baseball player. And we won. I think, I believe it, we won 23 to 18. It was more like a basketball score, but, you know, <laughs> okay. a lot of power hitters. You know. Way to go. But no, the next time you do get into town, you do come up and test our acoustics and I will I'll, uh, next time I'll promise I'll bring my guitar how do you like our new studios oh it's real nice kind of looks like uh, early Ramada Inn <laughs> <laughs> how'd you know it is in disguise it is the Ramada Inn um, and Damien I want to thank you for uh, coordinating all this keeping it together and we urge everyone if uh, you're listening to this a week later <laughs> to go down to the Warner Theater tonight if you can figure that out and see John uh, for a real fine show uh, down at the Warner and again thank you for coming by thank you Thomas okay is there anything else you'd like to talk about before um, you know I turn it off something that we can um, cover <clears throat> be glad uh, we got well, about about an hour's you know with really <laughs> Oh, well, in that case, <laughs> on a day like today, we pass the time away. Sing with me, Blotto. <laughs> Writing love letters in the sand. Damien and I are going to go to France and open up an, an imaginary body and fender shop <laughs> for poets only. <laughs> oh, of course, we will use our aliases, won't we, Blotto? Yeah. Rassan. Rassan Reno. Do you... Um, you like playing outdoors, John? I mean, in the summertime? I, yeah, I do. You like know, the the, uh, the sound always doesn't work out as well. Sometimes it does, you know, but it's just a little bit more pleasant. You know, I always enjoy playing out of Carter Barron. And um, we're just going to start doing some outdoor things in a very few weeks. Me and Emmylou Harris are playing on the Delaware in Philadelphia in about a week and a half outdoors, you know. And then uh, Jerry Jeff Walker and Jonathan Edwards and me are doing a show up in Lenox, Massachusetts, uh, in a couple of weeks. That'll be outdoors. So we'll get to do some outdoor things. How was Jonathan uh, last night? Oh, real good. Real yeah. good. I've never played together with him, you know, before. And it's a, and it's a good show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get down there tonight, hopefully, because I'm looking forward to seeing your band. I've been hearing a lot about it. got a lot of calls last night, about 11.30 or so. Kids called up and said, it was fantastic, man. It was just fantastic with the band. He's playing electric guitar and all, and I said, wow. Yeah, I put some big old fat strings on my Stratocaster, and I can beat it like a, an acoustic, and it doesn't sustain for a long time, so like I can pl get into all this crazy rhythm. And like I say, the band, the drummer just watches my arm, and every time my arm hits a guitar, he hits the drum. Yeah. And it's, it's a lot of fun having a, a band, because you hear all these things. Actually, when you're playing alone, you hear them going on in your head. But you can't introduce them. They don't have names, <laughs> you know. And now I got a band that plays exactly what I'm playing. Who is in your band, John? Uh, the guitar player is John Burns. I mentioned him before. He's Jethro Jeff Burns' son. Uh, the drummer is uh, Angie Various. I found Angie in a in a country music club in uh, Chicago. He was playing six days on the road, like twenty times a night. So he was glad to get out of that. And. Uh, the bass player came from John Burns band. His name is Tom Pickles Bukarski. And Pickles like came from the John Burns band that was uh, just about one of the most popular bar bands in Chicago, you know. And when Johnny dissolved his band, he took the bass player with him and joined me. 
And on piano, I lucked out with this fellow, Howard Levy. Howard, like, is a total musical student. You know, he just is in love with all kinds of music. Mainly he likes classical and jazz, but he digs playing, you know, my stuff. And, and he plays piano and organ and excellent harmonica player. Plays all, all wind instruments, saxophone, plays mandolin on my bluegrass stuff. And I even got him a steel drum. <laughs> Because I like to hear a steel drum every once in a while. I heard uh, a steel drum band, and uh, me and my wife ended up in uh, Aruba, a little island off of Venezuela, I believe. You know, a couple of years back, we wanted to get away for a couple of days. And we went on down there, and I was sitting at this bar outdoors, you know, and there's a big concrete patio, and they had a steel drum band of about, there was about nine steel drums, and all the kids were 14 and under playing it. Well, they played Crocodile Rock on the steel drums. And when they did, these two somebody threw a hamburger on the dance floor on the patio, <laughs> and two dogs had a dog fight over the, <laughs> over the hamburger while they were, they were playing Crocodile Rock on the steel drums. And I'm sitting at the bar with an, a, you knew this guy was a South American gangster with his bodyguard and a wife that looked like Charles. You know, and I just thought the whole scene should be recorded for posterity. So I bring a steel drum with me on the road down to remind me of that one afternoon, you know, at the bar in Aruba. Yeah, it's things like that to keep me going. I bet. <laughs> Dog fights to Crocodile Rock. <laughs> That's too much. Those, you know, those people get pretty hot. They get close to the equator and they get crazy. You know? <laughs> me too. Yeah. <coughs> well, would you do some IDs for us, John? Some more? We've sure, got, we've sure. We've got your one with the guitar and the feedback. All right. Bit. Um, just do a, a straight one. Hi, this is John Prine. You're listening to WHFS Bethesda. Mir write it out. Kill bees. Just kill the mice. Uh, what about uh, what about the uh, where it's at on the dial? Do you want to say that? Or? Yeah, I got something written out. I think in my wallet. You just read the T-shirt if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, you got a T-shirt. Oh, great. One or two point three. He behaved, huh? didn't he? Yeah, he did. He we don't have to read the one on Just don't call yourself that. <laughs> Hello, this is Stephen Stills. <laughs> Has anybody seen my money? <laughs> if you, whenever I'm in Washington, D.C., I listen to WHFS Bethesda, Maryland. You don't have to say that. Oh, okay. You know, hi, this is John Prine. You're listening to Oh, okay. WHFS. I got you. I just you. gave it to right. the call letters and whenever. All right. Hi, this is John Prine. Oh. <laughs> 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 See what I mean about making a record? <laughs> Dang it. Uh. Hi, this is John Prine, and you're listening to WHFS in Bethesda, 102.3 on your little radio dial. Would you do one for me, John? Hi, this is yeah. John Prine, you're listening to Thomas on WHFS, Bethesda. Okay. <laughs> Hi, this is John Prine, you're listening to WHFS in Bethesda. No, Thomas, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, one more. Hey, hi, this is John Prine. You're listening to Thomas on WHFS in Bethesda, 102.3, almost in the middle. <laughs> Would you do one for David? Yeah. Okay. Sure. David's a big yeah. fan. <laughs> hi, this is John okay. Prine. You know, you know who you are, I hope. Mm-hmm. Hi, this is John Prine. You're listening to the David Show, because I know, because he's playing this tape. And we're on WHFS 102.3 FM on your radio dial, bub. <laughs> That's great. You can do something else crazy if you want. You know, fart in the mic, anything you want to do. No, I do that at home. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we got to run to dinner That's before the show. John, really appreciate sure you coming not. by, because I know it was hectic, and... I was hoping... All you have is extra larges? You'd come up last oh, night or something. Wait a minute. I like to take in what you really like to teach you. Here's a large. You know, all yours. All, all yeah. large is yeah, great. One's, one's large. I'll just shrink one for The other two are extra large. Thank you. And good luck with bruised orange, John. Homegrown radio. All right. Homegrown radio. 
rock hymns. That was a lot of fun. I got a lot of good stuff. We'll send Great, you a, a copy of it. I'd appreciate it. Damien yeah. knows how to get in touch with you. Great. So we'll well, I, I've got to get his new address. Okay. Because you just you moved or something, didn't you? Yeah. Right. The, the federal is where I mean, he had a split. Yeah. I know. That's why I shaved my mustache. Yeah, I know. They'll do it. They again. got me confused with uh, uh, what's his name? Charles Bronson. <laughs> no, he's trying to look like Good well, Jack. Well, but the Hertz guy thought I was Bronson. You know, and he said, he said, come on. You know, I said, okay, man. I'm just trying to get away for a few days. And he says, funny, you don't look like Charles Bryce. This guy, you was convinced I was, and after I admitted I was, he said, "He said you don't look like you're doing the movies." Yeah. Well, send it to us or something. You know, send us an address and we'll get the. Table. No, I'm leaving with Patty. Oh, yeah, that's right. cool. That's dynamite. Great. Thank you, John. Excuse me. Yeah. How is it? Yeah, we got to get that. Yeah. I'm leaving my new address. Oh, okay. Sure. You got the phone number, though. Right. Oh, excuse me, Ronnie. Hi, Brenda. How are you doing? She's a big fan. She's singing the song. That was nice. Oh, great. She sings the songs, too. That's the same. That's the one. Thank you, John. Uh, soon I'm going, John. I'm a cleaner, so. Oh, you are? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris, you know, without you. How you doing? Oh, tired. Thank you. Sure. Tired? What did you Come do? Stay up to bed last night? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, five or six o'clock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything's working out great. Yeah. So. Hey, when you come out to the show? Yeah, me and Damien will go back a long way. We got, we had a big master plan here. We got, we're still going to take the universe over. Mm -hmm. We're going to try. Right. <laughs> I reckon we can do just anything and put our mind to it, baby. <laughs> okay. Good luck tonight, John. All right. I'll see you tonight. Thank you all for doing it. Yeah. Oh, out there. Yeah. Sure.